back. Happy Thursday, everyone, for our devotional with Pastor and I together. Pastor, you know what? I just thought of what, being from the eighth grade, you would actually have them right now for religion in this quarter, right? Absolutely. Missing. And it's Thursday morning. I would be having them in Cafe Collide. Missing the kids so much. So after this, I think I can go to Cafe Collide and have a hot chocolate just for them. So I think I'll join you for that. Okay. <laughs> so, sounds good. So... We're enjoying this, as you can see, of uh, bringing this. Um, a lot of good um, questions asked of this. So one of the things you heard us yesterday was talking of our faith is good enough. And part two of that kind of goes what we're going to talk about today. It's, um, it's the fear of everything that's going on and, and some of the media stuff that's playing to it. And even a lot of discussion, this is the sign of end times. So, Pastor, just going back to my Sunday school times here and... Um, they talked about the ram's horn and the trumpet sounding and growing outside of town here just between Seaman and Bayport, not too far from the railroad tracks. I remember as a little kid, every time I heard a train whistle in the morning, I would run out and look at the sky and see if Jesus was coming, in, in fact, if that was a trumpet. So I know that kind of at the talk uh, of that, of, um, you know, Revelation, is, when is Jesus coming back? Is this a sign of end times, you know, um, with the, pandemic that's going around, governments kind of doing things, um, talks of war, but if you really look through history, back before the U.S. and that, there's been a lot of big plagues. I am traveling for business. Earthquakes is nothing new. I mean, Taiwan gets thousands of years, or a year, even in the U.S., tornadoes, floods, hurricanes is an annual thing, and you look back, I remember 2012, not so far when they thought the world is definitely ended to the Maya Kanda. Calendar. Yeah, um, December 12, 2012, right? And the world is predicted throughout the years, well, 80 times a year, people pick the date. So, um, Revelations, we're gonna talk about a little scary, you know, there there is a science of that kind of talk about. But from when I went to school here, and from what my pastors, what you have taught me, all the way that ever since Ascension Day, we have been re waiting for God's return. And we don't know the time of his return that he talks about, so be on guard with that. Pastor, a lot of fear is created that this is the time it's gonna happen. How can, what's a good story? How has us as Christians addressed that? That's a good question. And I, I love the, the preamble you had there to the question because that's a beautiful story of young Chuck running outside, hearing the train whistle, thinking, this is it. Yeah. And you probably ran outside with a little bit of joy, a little bit of pep in your step, thinking, I get to see Jesus. Yes. He's coming back now. And get away from my sisters. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's yeah. the way, that joy, that's what, for us Christians, that's what goes along with the end of this world. It's not fear. Of course, in our old sinful self, we do have a certain amount of fear because we have never been to heaven. We don't know what it's going to be like. It's going to be incredible and awesome and amazing. But for us, that last day will not be a day of fear. And we oftentimes view the book of Revelation as a scary book because of the plagues and the wrath being outpoured upon the world. But really, our Lord gives us that book as a great source of comfort. Because amid all of those difficulties, all of that, all those plagues, and the suffering that we find there, there's wonderful moments of comfort. When St. John gets a glimpse of the saints in heaven, and they are safe with Jesus Christ, their Savior. It is Jesus who continues the vision. At every step of the way, Jesus is in complete and total control. And so we realize <clears throat> amid the pandemic that we're facing now, Jesus is still in control. And just like you said, throughout history there have been rumors and wonders about when he's going to come back. Already in the first century there were those rumors and wonders. People thought that the Apostle John wouldn't die until Christ came back. Well, John died and Christ hadn't come back yet. Jesus could come back at any time. There's nothing preventing him. He's God. He's all-powerful. And we Christians look for 
just like young Chuck looking for <laughs> Jesus to come back here in that train whistle, we anticipate Jesus coming back. We rejoice that he will because we know what's going to happen when he comes back. He'll take us to heaven to be with him eternally. And what will that look like? It'll look better than we could ever imagine. We'll have these glorified bodies. We'll be perfect. It'll be this wedding feast that goes on into eternity. So that day is not a day of fear or worry. It's a day of great hope and anticipation and excitement. We get to leave all of the suffering, all of the turmoil, all of the worry of this world and be with our Savior Jesus in a much better way in heaven. And I think that's what we want to drive home today is that comfort that we Christians have, even now in the face of suffering, even in the face of death. We have those promises that Jesus makes to us and the comfort that he gives to us we know that everything will be okay through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Whether he comes back today to judge a living and the dead, or whether he doesn't, it's okay with us. We anticipate, we look forward to his coming, and Jesus reminds his disciples to stay awake. That is, to keep watching, to keep waiting, and to keep the faith that we have alive by being in his word and in prayer, rejoicing in his gifts and receiving his gifts day after day. Doing that, living in Jesus, we have nothing to fear. These pandemics, these times, are a reminder for us Christians to repent of sin and turn again to Jesus. We don't know when he's going to come back. He'll come back like a thief in the night. But we want to be prepared in faith. Should we have a prayer? We should. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, grant us great joy, just like Chuck looking and watching the trains and hearing the whistles. Grant us great joy for Jesus to come back. Remind us that all things are in his control. He can come back whenever he wants, and he will come back to judge the living and the dead. We have been judged already at the cross of our Savior Jesus we are innocent, forgiven, redeemed through his blood. Grant us to live as people of great hope, knowing all that Jesus has done for us. We need not worry or fear over that last day, because Jesus has loved us and grants us eternal life through him. Heavenly Father, grant us to live as people of that hope, spreading that hope to those whom we meet, to those who may be worried or fearful, Grant us to remind them of all that Jesus has done for them. We ask all of this, trusting in Jesus Christ, our Savior, praying it all in his name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, as a favor, I also ask you to keep in our prayers your teachers, um, such as here at Christ the King or whatever Christian school they might serve, or even high school, that pray and miss you and love you. I am thankful for the efforts they have put into my life from if you were a Sunday school teacher to pastor to our teachers uh, here at, when it was Emmanuel and at USA. Um, keep your pastors wherever you may attend church or watch online and stay in the word that pastor talked about. They are doing a great um, works to keep you in the word however they can reach out at this time. So I thank you. Thank you pastor at this time. Uh, he and I look forward to doing more videos like this, check in next week, but we will continue our series here at the church. Tune in tomorrow as Pastor talks about Do Not Doubt Your Faith.